Hi, and welcome to my channel. First of all, that sun there isn't too much, isn't going to spoil the video so much, and uh, probably my speakers will going to spoil it more than anything else. But these are the Morning Short 15 speakers. In the past, I've done the Morning Short 10s, 25s, and 35s. So I'll see these are uh, pretty local pickups to me, actually. They're easy enough to get hold of, they're on eBay, places like that. You're going to pick up a pair between 20, 25 pounds, something like that. If you get a local bloke somewhere locally who's trying to get rid of them, you're going to get them a bit cheaper. And I paid £15 for my pair. The only person to bid on it, that kind of thing. You're going to see that where the starting bid's fairly low. And if it's a local pickup only, he's not going to post them. You're going to pick up speakers fairly cheap. So to the fact that I don't really sell a lot of speakers because of that reason. It's only to be local pickup. And no one's really interested unless you've got an unbelievably good pair of speakers. Most speakers are very hard to sell local pickup. So I usually take them apart and send them to spare something like that to help someone else out. But anyway, back to these 15s. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take them apart as I normally do on the bench, have a little look inside, then come back to see uh, what I thought they sounded like. So there they are on the bench. Uh, now, if we take them apart there, uh, as you can see, there's the actual uh, base driver there, and this is uh, a Mormon Short Design 165mm long throw base driver. Uh, and there's the tweeter there, and uh, this tweeter is an Orbex 12mm synthetic dome tweeter. Now, these speakers are rated at 60 watts. 8 ohms and 87 dB is the sensitivity, so you have to turn the amplifier just a little bit higher than normal. Uh, these are you know, quite a, a low sensitivity compared with other speakers. So, uh, this also, this speaker's got uh, what's called a Postec overload protection little circuit, a couple of little protectors in there. We'll come to them a bit later on because I'm going to take them out uh, as the video progresses, but for the time being, I'm going to let you. Uh, Give you my thoughts, should I say? I'm not going to let you do anything. <laughs> I'm going to give you my thoughts of what I actually thought these sounded like. Okay, on to the sound. How did these actually sound? Um, well, before I talk about the sound, I just want to draw your attention to this bass speaker here and that cap. As you can see, if I put a picture up on the screen, it's not very centered very well. It's not dead center compared to the other one and compared to speakers you go out and buy. So I think the bloke at the factory that day was having a little bit of off day. Obviously, these would have been mass produced uh, and it looks like the quality control wasn't that good uh, when these were uh, mass produced, even though you know, it sounds okay, etc. But uh, I don't know, if you bought these speakers £129 thereabouts back then, got them home and uh, took the front grills off and you've got to look at that for the uh, life that you're going to have these speakers for. It would been a bit disappointed, I think. It would have bugged me, uh, I think, so I would have probably returned them or something like that. Maybe I've been a bit fussy, but uh, yeah, not very good there, I don't think. Okay, so um, I tried these with a new kind of setup, uh, a few different amplifiers. Uh, different kind of music, all that kind of thing, moving them about in the room, etc. And I found the best position for these was probably two or three inches away from the wall. These are not rear port or anything like that. These are a closed unit, a sealed unit. Uh, I think the MS-10s had an open port at the back, but uh, they didn't give out a great deal of bass, to be honest with you. Where these, you know, for the size of the cabinet, they give out a fair bit of bass, really, especially up against the wall, you know, quite tight up against the wall, two or three inches away from the wall. These give out a reasonable amount of bass. And the bass, you know, it was okay, it was a bit woolly, it was, um, you know, it was lacking some detail and that, but you know, it was good. It was thumping along with the music and that's quite an enjoyable kind of bass. You know, that sounded okay. There's no real problems with it really. Could have done with some more detail, etc. But other than that, you know, it was okay. You know what I mean? It's, you know, it's reasonably acceptable. Bit, bit woolly and that, but you know, it was okay. It was acceptable, that was okay. The mid range wasn't too bad. Uh, the vocals sounded quite nice, you know, they weren't too bad, the vocals, they was getting let down by what this speaker here has got, is, is, is the top end, it's a bit shrill, it's a bit bright, it's spiky, the top end, it's just got too much top end, and, then, and that was kind of interfering a little bit with the vocals and that, I mean, I'm just making it uh, fatiguing, just making, you know, the, old, the sound of the speaker was fatiguing, but the instruments didn't sound too bad, the sax, uh, the piano and that, you know, wasn't so bad, but just had that kind of edge to it, um, where, like I say, this top end was getting in the way and, and spoiling it for the other bits and pieces in the party. You know, one of these things was just sticking out in the party and spoiling it for everyone else kind of thing. Like I say, I'm gonna go back, these speakers haven't got a vast amount of detail, but they're okay, you know what I mean? It's, like I say, they're not too bad for what they are. But the top end was letting this down. Like I say, the vocals was okay, the uh, sax, the, the, the piano, um, yeah, all that wasn't too bad. Um, you know, it's quite a nice sound. It, it wasn't too bad. It wasn't too bad. It wasn't fantastic. Could done with some more details. You know, some more resolution. You know, cl cleaned up a bit on that. But uh, other than that, it wasn't too bad. You know what I mean? It's one of these speakers that I kind of stuck on, and I, you know, I felt like a bit like um, 
I was at a club or something like that, going back to when I used to go out clubbing and that, but it was that kind of sound, it gave it a fair beat to it, I was, you know, quite enjoyed it, just at that top end was spoiling it for, you know, for the rest of the speaker kind of thing. So that was the main cause, uh, the main problem with the speaker was the top end. The actual sound stage was quite nice, you know, it was quite nice, the sound stage. It went beyond the speakers as well. Instrument placement was quite good. The instruments, um, like I say, they could have done with some more clarity, they could have done with some more space around them. Um, you know, could have done with more focus and that, could have had more space, could have, you know, to pull them out and have a little bit of space around them and that. Um, it, it's, it had a, a, quite a, you know, a reasonable amount of airiness to it. I do like a little bit of airiness to the sound stage and that, some three dimensional and all that kind of stuff. It had a bit of three dimensional to it, which was quite good. It wasn't too bad, you know, it was quite, you know, it's quite a nice um, three dimensional to it. It wasn't as good as the, um, uh, what should we say, the Wolfdale's there, the Diamond Freezer wasn't as nice and as spaced out as that, but it still had a reasonable amount of space to it. The actual sound stage so you know, that was quite you know it was a positive side but the main problem with this speaker is that's uh that top end and it's not it's not right at the top it's kind of like i'm, I'm guessing a little bit i would have said between three five kilohertz somewhere around there that was just spoiling. it was just too pronounced it was too forward and it was just you know it was a shrill kind of thing and it was just edgy it was like spiky it was just you know it needed taming down quite a bit so uh as they are uh I think you're gonna. It's gonna be fatiguing. It's gonna get on your nerves a bit. If you can kind of like, if you just wanted like, say, I kind of thought back to the clubbing kind of scene years ago. I used to go to clubbing and that. You just want a little pair of speakers and you want to kind of that beat and you're gonna forgive that top end or you want to go to your amplifier and maybe turn that treble down. Probably. I mean, I turned it down. And it didn't sound so bad. Then I turned it down uh, from the twelve o'clock position, which would be zero to. Uh, what would that be? The nine o'clock. So I took it down. So if yours goes one, two, three, four, five, you're probably doing it down to number minus three to kind of tame that top end down. But other than that, you know, they're okay. You know what I mean? They're okay for, for what you're going to pay. They're okay. But I think that top end is going to get on your nerves. Uh, that kind of, like I say, that shrillness and that sibilance as well. You know, when, when people are, I say people, when, when a performer's singing, uh, the female singing, that sibilance is just going to, it's going to start piercing your ears a little bit, I think. So that needs taming down. So um, what I did, I did a few little experiments, only a few. I thought I'd change the capacitor in this unit and I'm gonna short out them to Positech overload protection things. So let's see how I've gotten with that. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna change that capacitor. There's only one capacitor in there, so I'm gonna change that. That's a 3.3 all cap capacitors on the crossover. I'm gonna change that from Mondol 3.3, as you can see, I've done that there now. And also then Positech overload protection, them little discs there you can see arrowed. I'm gonna short them out. You can take them out and just put a link in there, or you know, it's a fairly easy crossover just to put a complete wire across and short them completely out. Now they're, they're there to you know to protect the speaker, so I kind of this on too loud. I'm, I'm not gonna have it really loud. I'm gonna say too loud, probably having to find nine or ten or something like that. But um, yeah, so obviously just bear that in mind if you did do that, don't start cranking your amplifier up to full volume because you're not gonna have any protection there. Now these uh, do measure, I didn't measure these, I, I, I followed a chap actually, I, I, I put a link down below where he's got these speakers and he's done quite a few modifications, he's changed the crossover completely, he's changed the driver unit, uh, he's put some um, foam stuff inside etc, I put a link down below and he's you know, got now a reasonable sound out of it, it seems like at the end it took him a while that he's got a reasonable uh, kind of sound out of these by doing quite a few alterations, I'm not going to go that far, I'm not a person that knows what to change, I'm not going to follow him leave and get all the stuff it's not worth it because I want to get on with some other projects. I'm not here to go mad about I may just change the capacitor or something like that, or swap over a tweet or something like that. That'd be it. Uh, just to give you kind of a little bit of an example. I kind of do my reviews that you're going to go and buy these speakers, and it's going to be someone that don't know a lot about electronics or going to get a soldering or anything like that. So it's going to go and buy these speakers second hand. What would he get if he went and bought that pair of 20 or 30 year old speakers? What would he expect to get now if he went out and bought them? That's what it's really about. Okay, I'm gonna change the capacitor in here, so that's gonna make a little bit of difference. That may be just a small project he can do. You may think, oh, I'll get a soldering iron. It don't look too difficult just to take that capacitor out and put a new one in. But it's not gonna be one of these per persons that's gonna go around and start buying all the extra bits for it and all that kind of thing. You know, it's, I think mainly newbies and that, people like that's gonna come here and look at my channel are gonna buy something cheap and they're probably not gonna know a lot about it, to be honest with you, and they just want it so they can just buy it, put it on a stand, put it on the side, put it on the cabinet, put it wherever turn the amplifier on, put the CD on, put their vinyl on or whatever, just listen to it. They don't want to do no more mucking around or anything like that. I think probably 90 or 95% of the people that's coming to look at my, what I think my reviews or whatever on this channel is probably going to do. So I'm not going to do too much. Like I say, I've changed that cap. I've shorted out them Positech 
um, protections in there. And like I say, go back to this bloke on the forum, he did measure these and the resistance of these, I think one of them was 0.3 of an ohm, one of them was 0.1 of an ohm. So it's 0.4 of an ohm difference here. So it's going to give just a little bit more, uh, shall we say, juice. It's going to go to that sweeter. So just a fraction more. So bear that in mind when I come to uh, listen to it now. I should imagine it's going to be just a tad more bright, probably just a tad more. So um, anyway, how did it actually sound? So how did they sound off them few modifications? Well, the top end sounded... It's any more, you know, more detail in that top end, it sounded clearer, uh, but it's still no getting away from the fact that that top end was too bright. It was still, the sibilance was still there. Uh, but you know, like I say, you know, when you eat the symbols and that and that kind of thing, you could tell the symbols were, you know, it was a clearer, more, more, more resolution to the sound there of them symbols. Did clear it up, but it was still, like I say, that sibilance was just getting your nerves, it's going to get fatigued and it's going to, it's going to do your editing kind of thing towards the end, I think, if you listen to it for too long. Like I say, if you want to go, you know, if you go back to, like I say, it sounds a bit like a club speaker where you're in the and the boom, 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 and it gives a fair amount of bass for the size of these speaker up close against that wall. It's quite surprising how much bass they actually give out, really, uh, you know, for the size of the cabinet and that, and not being rear ported as well. But uh, still, that sibilance is going to get on your nerves, that top end is going to start bugging you, I think, after a fairly short while, really. So I thought what I'll do is that uh, them two little Positex I took out, 0.4 of an ohm, not a massive amount, but uh, I thought I'd compensate that a bit. The, the lowest resistor I could find in my toolbox was a 2 ohm, so I've stuck a 2 ohm in series, as you can see there, with that tweeter. Gave another listen, and it was, uh, you know, it toned it down a tad. It wasn't a vast amount, weren't nowhere near as, a fault, as much as I thought it would be, but it was a tad amount. But it's still, no, you know, getting away from the fact that that top end would start getting on your nerves, even with that two ohm resistor in there. So I took that out and I had uh, one of these tweeters, these have been laying around for a while now, these JPW tweeters. And in fact, I think it's the same Orex uh, tweeter that's already in there. And I just thought I'd swap it over anyway, uh, just to see if that's gonna make any difference. I think these are may maybe more of an OEM version and maybe this is more like their like, version that gets maybe just just passes that quality control just a little bit higher kind of thing. I don't know, I'm guessing a little bit. But anyway, I thought I'd swap them over. I stuck them in now and I gave another listen uh, to the speakers and it didn't really make much difference at all to be honest with you, if anything. Maybe just a slight, it maybe just a slightly sounded better, a little bit more clearer. But it, it was very, very slight. And I may be like going between the two, swapping them over and all that. It, it wasn't that apparent, let's put it that way. So I don't think that's done the trick neither. So what I did, I took that resistor back out, I stuck it back on the amplifier, and I went back to that setting, like I say, at uh, nine o'clock with the uh, treble. So, you know, not many amps don't go down to six o'clock, I usually start about seven o'clock up to you know, 12, then obviously the other way around, so about five o'clock. So I put it down quite a bit, that treble. It didn't sound too so bad, you know what I mean? It's no getting away from the fact that uh, it, it's still a little bit rough around the edges, that top end, but uh, it definitely toned it down, made it more you know, pleasant to listen to. But obviously that's interfering with some other parts of your music arrangement or your track, or whatever, bringing that treble down too much. So um, not really a way to go. So what I would say, if you don't want to spend some time, go and get yourself another tweeter like this bloke does. I like to say, I'll leave a link down below on that forum. If you want to start mucking around, spending a bit more time, spending some more money on these, which I don't think all my kind of subscribers uh, or people come to this channel, shall I say, not everyone subscribes, I wish they did. I have you know, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of subscribers kind of thing. But um, people come here to kind of listen to what, uh, what they can get for a cheap amount of money. They're going to get it home. They're not going to do any modification to it at all. You know, they've spent 30, 40, 50 or 60 pounds on something, like a pair of speakers or something. They're not going to get home and start taking it all apart and changing capacitors and all that kind of stuff and experimenting with it. Because they're not that kind of type of person. They just go around to buy the unit, stick it on the side and listen to it. So this is what this channel, like I say, kind of does is that uh, that's what you're gonna go and get. If you're gonna go and buy a 20 year old pair of speakers, this is what to expect kind of thing. This is what they're gonna sound like. They're probably not gonna sound as good as they did in their prime. If you don't mind just changing one capacitor or something, that's probably gonna improve it. But uh, you know, if you've got to go and get yourself a soldering iron, if you're not into it, you've got to go and find someone to do it for you. So if that's not your kind of thing, I think that's like most people that come to this channel. There are some people obviously on this channel who's got some good ideas how to do this, how to do that, how to modify that and whatever, which, uh, which is great uh, for anyone that does want to do that. But like I say, I think most people just want to go and buy something and that's it. A bit like buying a brand new car maybe, you know, or a second hand car, shall I say. You bought it, you don't want to start spending some more money or getting some more stuff done to it. You know nothing about mechanics at all. You just expect that to, you know, go well or whatever, do what it's supposed to do kind of thing. So if that's the case, 
you're not going to do any mods, you're not going to change any capacitors or anything like that. You're going to go and buy a pair of speakers at face value like this. I'll probably give these a miss, to be honest with you, though, because I think that top end is really going to get on your nerves and uh, going to be quite fatiguing quite quickly. So, um, you know, a lot less you want to get back to that kind of clubbing kind of sound where you're not too fussed about the top end. It's going to give you that boom, boom, and it's because it does give a reasonable amount of bass out for the size of these speakers. They're not really poor or anything like that, closed units and put them up against the wall. There's a reasonable amount of size of bass for the size of these speakers. I was quite surprised really. But it sounds like I say it's not that clear. It's, say not, it's all right, but uh, you know, it could be clearer. It's a little bit on the muddy side, that kind of thing. So that's it really. So I'll, I'll probably give these a thumbs down and say maybe stay clear of these and look for something else, even though they are cheap. Okay, until the next video, I'll say thanks for watching and I'll see you all soon.